It's time for Live on Lockdown, brought to you by SA Motocross in association with MSA, Cannabis Energy Drinks, and TRP. First gate pick, David Goosen. Live on Lockdown, brought to you by MSA Cannabis Energy Drinks and TRP. It's going to be time now to catch up with the riders, see what they've been doing on the lockdown time, and see how pumped they are to get ready to get on the gate. Catching up with the Goose down in Cape Town. How are you doing, Goose? Hey, Matt. How's it going? And uh, obviously, everybody tuning in. Hello, and uh, cool to catch up. I'm excited to chat to you guys. Yeah, man. I mean... I'm looking at my watch. I just cannot believe how long this whole situation has been going on for. I mean, you guys hardly got any racing done before they locked the doors on us. So what have you been up to uh, while we've been on these big restrictions? Yeah, that's true. It's been a, it's been a long time. Um, crazy to think that we raced months and months ago. And I uh, was looking uh, just for a random picture the other day. And I like scrolled and scrolled and scrolled. And it's been some time. So i uh, kind of excited to get back to it. And who knows exactly when, but um, yeah, just been busy. Lockdown was quite quite hectic. Um, got through it at least, or so we're getting through it, and it's getting uh, a little bit easier at the moment. So probably not a bad time to be talking to you guys. You know, it's, it's a bit more positivity right now than you know the the harsh three week lockdown period that we had. So yeah, during that first bit, I saw. I think it was just at the end of that three weeks, or maybe week four. Uh, you guys actually went out. Uh, Looked like you were getting a little bit frustrated, so you went out and did a little bit of a, a fun project for one of your partners. Tell us how that went. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the the first beginning of lockdown, I'd say the first two weeks for me was kind of exciting because it's been a hectic start to the year, like really busy with trying to be the best racer that I can, trying to be the best at my or as best as I can with my work and stuff. Anyway, uh, lockdown first two weeks was quite cool, and then the whole world jumped on the social media bandwagon and. Um, yeah, just it was quite exciting. It, it was very entertaining and everybody doing cool stuff and putting themselves out there. And obviously, for me, I was trying to give back to the people who helped me out. And um, we got a couple of emails here and there. And uh, the the best project that we did was this one for Monster Energy, just to show how I would go and buy a couple of cans in lockdown and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, we just... Uh, had a, had a fun project and the idea came about because everyone was doing so much that we got to like make something unique about it and it can't be like awkward and cheesy so we came up with an idea and then i said to my wife i was like i can't do that like that's not me it's like come on yeah you're not, so, you're not cheesy you're not cheesy yeah are you? <laughs> so i was like i gotta do something though i don't have a space to do anything on a motorbike you know in the house and stuff so it was a tricky one but we came up with this idea and then thought let's just give it a go and uh it worked out to be pretty pretty fun and i think monster loved it fox loved it so it was pretty fun, and um, I, edited, I edited it myself as well, which was like part of the cool process for me. Never, I'm not a, a tech geek at all, and uh, to make what I made there was fun. It was cool. So that was a good couple of days of hard graft, if you want to call it, in lockdown. Yeah, it, it came out well. I've got to ask, what did that guy in the queue say to you when you were there in your full kit? So he, it was pretty funny. He, he just wanted to talk to me. He was like, what the hell is this guy doing? Um, so he like looked at me once or twice in the store and uh, I had dark lenses in my goggles. So like he couldn't really see me, but I was giving him the eyeball thinking, you know, seeing what he's saying. And anyway, in the car, he says to me, um, what did he end up saying? He's like, did you ride here? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, like I rode here, you know, um, sort of thing. So it was a bit awkward because I didn't know what to say at the time. But, um, but yeah, he kind of like just was intrigued with what was going on. And then basically asked me straight up if I rode to the shops or not, you know. So it was pretty funny. <laughs> um, dude, um, and then let, let's talk about uh, what went down at the beginning of the year out in uh, PE, the sand pits. I mean, everyone's got their good tracks, their bad tracks. I don't think you've got a bad track, but uh, tell me how the year kicked off for you. Um, pretty good numbers. 
Yeah, that's right. The numbers were, were good. I mean, we're in a good place. PE is a tricky one because you're starting the year off, so you can see who's sort of done their homework or not. Um, and it's one of those tracks where you kind of click with it or you don't. And if you don't click with it, it's just painful. Like everything hurts. The holes are twice as big as what they normally are. The struggle is real, you know. So fortunately for me, I feel like we got the bike set up probably the nicest that I've had it in the sand for a while. Um, and then that starts the day really nicely. And uh, I had, I'd say, the fitness to back it up, which was really good. So uh, I threw away a really, really nice position on the 450, which, which I still kick myself today. Um, but the 250 went fantastic. I couldn't have asked for better. I really enjoy riding the 250. But yeah, the 450 has sort of hurt me because I would have had a pretty easy second overall in the bag if I just stayed on for another few laps. But Tristan was pretty fast in front. And uh, the mistake I made, I was looking a little bit too far ahead where he was and not where I was. And uh, I mistimed one of the big rollers, which anyone knows in sand, you do that, there's one way for you. And uh, the way the bike went off the track and everything just really put me way back in the pack. So, But otherwise, strong start to the year. I was very positive for the year and, and just had like fun. It was really cool. Whilst we were prepping for this uh, project, it was fun for me to go way back on your Facebook page and uh, bring out some of the old footage. Uh, a very it's young, exciting. spotty faced, uh, uh, blonde highlights goose. And uh, did, uh, did lockdown actually give you a chance to kind of look back at what was very close to the beginning of your, beginning of your career? Yeah, that's right. Um, lockdown did bring out all sorts of emotions and uh, good memories, I'd say, you know, with uh, catching up on old YouTube videos and um, stuff recorded on the TV from Nationals past. And then, I mean, this, I haven't seen this play for, for a really long time. Uh, this is really cool. And exactly like you said, that's kind of where it really started for me. I'd come from Zimbabwe, which racing was quite relaxed and, and a lot of fun for the family or our friends. But Coming to South Africa, that's lived in Durban, and um, I got sponsored, and I got a good deal there, you know, in 2006, I think was the first year, and um, kind of set my goals up for where I wanted to take the sport, and um, yeah, it was really cool to look back at it. It was good times. Did you uh, do a little review there as well? Because I, I checked out the interview there, and you had it all dialed in. You were like, okay, a couple of years in SA, then I'll hit the UK, then I'll go dominate the US. It was, uh, it was quite fun to listen to how pumped up yeah. you were. I think that's quite the norm with young kids growing up and uh, seeing some of the guys that we've had do really well from South Africa, that's the goal. And uh, I think I, I did okay, um, not quite where I wish I had ended up. Still never ever been to America, um, but I ended up doing a lot in Europe and I had some really good rides here and there, but just the the financial struggle, if you want to call it, I think limited me to quite a severe point, I guess. Um, so I had some really good races here and there, which were good enough to go somewhere. But then I'd say more than half were not so good with uh, certain reasons. So anyway, yeah, it, uh, it came to a close in about 2013. Um, and yeah, I can't look, I can't regret anything that I did. I tried my hardest. I had some good opportunities. I rode for, uh, decent people and teams, but it was just, it was tough. Like anyone thinking they want to go over there, you need to be so committed, so ready, family committed. Everything has to be in place. And that's why so few people make it really. It's, it's a tough, tough game that we're in. I hear you. Let's uh, talk about uh, what goes on on this side of the pond then. And uh, the last couple of years, you seem to have settled into a really powerful rhythm, uh, working with partners for a long time. And uh, also like the amount of work that you put in behind the scenes and, and the setup to get ready for the seasons. And I see a lot of suspension work happening behind the scenes. So just, you know, talk us through that process and, and obviously how important that, that part of it is. It, it becomes like a, a crucial element. Yeah, that's very true. Um, you know, straight away, some people that know me um, will know that I'm a little bit of a sensitive rider that um, I'm not riding with a lot of brute strength, but more with the technique and, uh, in order to have it really working well, the bike's got to work well. So, so I'm, not fan, I'm not a big fan of like horsepower. I'm not horsepower mad, but if my wheels are on the ground, then I'm on the ground and you know, my hand, my throttle's being twisted. So I really look for comfort um, on the bike. And uh, as you can see, the partnership I made with Justin from Shock, Lo Shock Logic has been good. Guy Henley, the owner of my team, is, he supports that and he, he knows from his racing days on where a bike needs to be and stuff like that. Sometimes it's maybe not good for me because I'm a bit too concerned about what the bike does. Um, 
but uh, that's every rider. We're all finicky. We all like what we like. But um, yeah, uh, fitness is obviously a big part of it. And uh, I find ways that make fitness fun for me. So I don't, sit, I don't have a routine. I don't have a trainer. I don't do anything like that. I do what uh, floats my boat, basically. And uh, with discipline behind that, you can't say... I'm going to do something once a week or whatever when, when the weather's good. I do have discipline, but I just train in ways that make it fun for me that it's not uh, specifically, you know, just hard on you to have to do something at a certain time and all that. I just make sure I do it and I do it in a, in a good manner. And the same thing with riding. When I ride, I ride properly. I don't go to the track five times a week and uh, mess around and socialize. I go there and I put in some good times and good laps and whatever and go home and carry on with my life, you know. And then uh, just checking out that footage there as well, that leads us on to uh, what's been happening in the world of media and how it relates to you as an athlete. It's not just this year, it's not just lockdown, but uh, for the last couple of years, the requirements of an athlete have become tenfold. It's not just putting in the work at the track. You've had to become a media ambassador. And I've watched a lot of riders actually um, have to develop. Some of them don't, but uh, you seem to be one of the guys that's good about pumping out those media projects as the years go on yeah that's cool and like you said you're playing some really cool interesting stuff here that i almost feel like i wouldn't mind watching again i haven't seen it for a while so i enjoy partnerships and working with people and all the people we're seeing are, are near and dear to me and we put some good content out there and i think that's where i really enjoy giving back and yes we want to win races and we want to um give our brands the best footage in racing, but doing other stuff like social media stuff, everyone's on it, everyone's doing it. And uh, it's just a different perspective to what we do and people, stuff that people can appreciate as well. You know, these distributing companies and, and bike shops and stuff, they, it's tough for them. It's, the industry is tough anyway. So if we can go a little bit out of our way to uh, build a content idea and make it happen and something cool, have fun with it as well. It's just not only racing. And I think it's important that people can look outside the box to give back to people who allow them to do their hobbies. And in a way, we are doing a hobby. We're not really making money out of doing this in South Africa. So it's really important to give back. You know, the guys that are on top of the game in, in the world, they, they give back a lot because the whole world is watching them. But we have a small community and I think we need to go outside the box to give back to these people that help us out. I think it was one of the biggest projects I've seen come out for a long time last year. But this time, I think, it was the, the, the sunrise sessions and uh, it's a very frosty start to the day and uh, kind of like this morning made me think of that. Probably, uh, <laughs> probably took you back there as well, looking at these images. I mean, I can still see frost on the dirt there, man. Yeah, this is a, a really cool day. Uh, the Fox, it's called Le Moth Limited Edition Kit. It just looks so rad. It was a modal video as well, so the red just worked really well. And um, very cold winter morning. We drove there, I think it was 5 o'clock in the morning, got there pitch black and slowly but surely set up. We had a fire going and it's at the graveyard uh, in Heidelberg. And uh, Francois there just prepped the track to the T, like water, ripped it. I mean, he goes, he goes, you know, the whole nine yards. And uh, Carl Quinto filmed, obviously. And we just, it just worked well. We had, a, you know, a great track to ride, but freezing cold. And obviously I had a big, big jacket on. So as soon as we kind of got riding, got warm, the jacket would come off and I'll rail the corners a few times and then put the jacket back on and stuff. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a good day that uh, a couple of years ago, actually, not last year, the year before, but, but really good memories of that. Sorry, my memory is not what it used to be, Goose. <laughs> well, the outfit's all the same, you see. Nothing really changes. I'm the same number, same color bike, same kit. So uh, it's an easy mistake. Yeah, man. And then um, tell me about how things are feeling at the moment for you on a, on a personal basis, getting yourself ready. Because my phone blew up about two weeks ago when uh, the minister stood up and said, you know, we're coming out of this thing and uh, non-contact sports can go. But, you know, we sit here, we still can't go racing, go practice. We can't go racing yeah. yet. Yeah, it's, um, I rode for the first time the other day and it was a really nice vibe at the track. A lot of people were enjoying what I'm enjoying and, uh, we have a cool community, so it was um, just a, a really nice vibe at the track. The track was fantastic. Um, people were in good spirits, and I kind of hope that people in the world as well are feeling a little bit refreshed after what we've been through. And it's, obviously, there's still a massive crisis going on and probably won't end for a while. Like, I'm no expert, but it's clear to what is happening. Um, but just if people can just work forward and, and not dwell on the past. Yes, we've all lost money. We've all 
feeling this mini recession or big recession, whatever it is. Um, but go forward. And I, I see this a little bit with some of the guys I'm working with, that they are either dwelling on the past or they're going forward. And I hope that we can all sort of move forward and, and just help the community and, and everything go forward. Um, but as for racing or riding, it's good to see people out there enjoying their motorbikes, enjoying their hobbies. And um, it's, it's just, it was a good vibe. Lots of people, like I say, were happy and, and in really good spirits. So race wise, um, no idea yet. I don't think that anybody's got any news yet, but uh, we still have six rounds to go and um, kind of like really wish we could go race. Um, so let's see what happens. I think we'll know in the next few weeks or, or months. Maybe we'll do some local racing in the next couple of months or maybe we'll do nationals by August or something. Who knows? But I'm pretty much ready to go. I'm excited to get back to it, back to the team and seeing everybody in the, you know, the regular faces again. Goose, that's great. We're going to wrap things up there. I'm going to hand across to you to obviously uh, give a shout out to anyone. This is a good platform and uh, we're going to be trying to work with uh, the lockdown or this kind of uh, media platform as we go forward as well. Uh, just to kind of give the guys a little bit more chance to actually uh, give the high five to the people they're working with and all of their supporters. So the floor is yours, Goose. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I, I, first time doing something like this live and it's pretty cool. Um, good platform, especially for what we're going through and I hope to see more of it. It's, it's really cool. Um, but yeah, basically just a big thank you to obviously everyone I ride for and that I have a partnership with. Um, you know, the, the bikes are from Yamaha, the team out of Africa, racing, um, Fox clothing, Motul and the engines and, and all the lubrication. Uh, Monster Energy, the big part of our program. Shock Logic with the suspension. Um, it's tough. Pirelli, um, SBS, DRD, it's uh, a service. There's a lot of products that, you know, form the package that we've got and it's, it's a package, package definitely to be reckoned with. So, uh, very happy with what I'm doing and who, who is around me and I just look forward to building on these relationships and thanks to them for the support and things like we're doing now is hopefully how I can pay back um, without being on the start line and um, soon we'll, we'll be out behind the gates and I hope to get it up top and um, family wise as well my wife Shannon obviously always behind me my parents in the UK and my sisters um, but yeah all family is a great one and just friends and family as well so yeah thanks to everybody that yeah is just involved with what we're doing Goose thanks so much for your time and uh, can't wait to see you out of the track otherwise we'll do another one of these and uh, talk about uh when you had peroxide blonde hair once again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't see it again, but we can talk about it. So thanks. Uh, yeah, appreciate it. And uh, keep well, guys. And everybody stay safe. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Thanks to the Goose. Fantastic awesome. to see the man behind the helmet, behind the bars, and still keeping his chin up, working hard for all of his brands before he can get back on the gate again. Hope you guys enjoyed the show and the catch up with the lockdown on one of our first athletes. We will be doing more of these. So stay tuned on all the press and follow Motocross South Africa on the Facebook page and all of their media platforms. We'll sign off with a nice little high five video from the Goose. Have a great time.